Dragon Ball Horror Kaiju and more. Steven Story Reviews. Hello there collectors, it's going to be Steven here and welcome to another Kaiju action figure review where today we're going to be taking a look at the Titanic Creations Gorgo. This one is going to be what is essentially a crowdfunding campaign where they needed to hit a minimum order quantity in order for Gorgo to be made and then so many orders after that they were able to add in stretch goals like uh, some sort of gold tower, I don't know, a baby Gorgo and some glow in the dark eyes with a different head sculpt. Very fun. There were some collaborations that were done here in order to get Gorgo made, including some promotional artwork and bringing in a very fun sculptor in order to get Gorgo off the ground to begin with. Considering that this is going to be Titanic Creations' first kaiju action figure, they have done Sofubi-like releases in the past, is this one going to be a home run to begin with, or is there some work to be done, but still a diamond in the rough? There are a few different ways that we can view this figure, and I think that we do need to take all aspects into consideration. Let's be gentle, it's their first time. Let's take a look to see whether or not it's going to be worth adding into your collection. All right, so let's go ahead and start the sculpt and paint section, which we do have a sculpt made by Dope Pope. How about accuracy? Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not really here for accuracy because there are going to be some folks who say that they prefer this or some folks who prefer that. And in this point, at this stage of the game, not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. Not going to discredit Dope Pope in any way, shape or form, but this is going to be the only Gorgo action figure on the market. And we are how many years in kaiju action figures? How many years in kaiju product? Yeah, okay, doesn't matter. Looks like Gorgo, good enough for me. But where I will compliment him on is going to be the thoroughness of the details. You, get, I mean, this is a fantastic looking figure with so many nice details. The scales, the scutes, the claws are nice and pointy. The teeth which I do think is going to be an issue in terms of paint application. Everything is one solid color. They could have definitely provided a bit more of a detailed paint application to make them look a bit more individual, which I think would have been nice. But nevertheless, the actual sculpted detail of Gorgo, whether it's going to be the folds that are going to be found in the ears, the flared nostrils, everything looks good. When it comes to the paint application, you can definitely see that there's going to be a quality control issue on mine when it comes to the pelvis area where there are going to be some scratches. It was like that way out of the box. You can check my unboxing. I do want to say overall though, I do like the paint application on Gorgo. More so particularly with the default head, we do have the eyes. There is uh, particularly another company that is looking to do the, that sort of eye shine effect. And I think Titanic Creations nailed it. This is exactly how it should look and good job. Really, really good. On the default head as well, we do have the red base for the eyes and there is actually going to be a little bit of a fade with an orange to it, which looks really good. The main body of Gorgo is going to be green and it does look like there's some purple dry brushing to it, some subtlety, which does help enhance some of the details. And then for the claws as well, there is going to be some, it appears to be beige and purple paint accents, which look awesome too. We do have the tan coloration on the main body, which some folks have not been too happy with when I've seen in some groups. Uh, but I think overall it just fits. I, th I think it looks fine. Big lizard. Cool. For the paint application overall, I do think that one of the issues that was not fully addressed is that some folks still think that it looks a bit too glossy. I'm not necessarily inclined to agree, but I do think that, um, yeah, it looks wet. Not super sheeny and super shiny, but a little wet. Overall, I do think that there are some areas that Titanic Creations can improve, but when it comes to their first figure, I think they did a solid job. For articulation, um, pretty basic and straightforward. What you're seeing is what you're getting. There isn't really anything hidden uh, or tips and tricks wise. I will say that in terms of quality control, maybe we could have tightened it up a little bit, but I think that's also going to play into the actual material of the plastic that's used. I'm going to have to say that I would equate this something similar to like a NECA figure. Um, if you are familiar with some of the Godzilla releases from them, then you should be right at home with the feel overall of Gorgo or agra whatever um not necessarily exactly as soft um and like let's say flabby but it definitely does feel uh in the same ballpark so let's go ahead and talk about it so mouth jaw opens and closes on a hinge though similar to some of the sh monster arts releases uh, depending on how you have the head position that can change the range so as you have gorgo to look up 
with the neck ball joint. Uh, we can open up the mouth that far, but then as we point the head down and we open the mouth, we do have a little bit restricted range of movement, so that's just something to keep in mind, but unfortunately that just comes with the territory for it. So for the head, it plugs in on a ball joint, and we're going to show you here because it does come with an alternate head sculpt. Uh, you can see it's a double axis or barbell style joint. So we get some pretty solid range of movement there. But again, uh, keep in mind for the sculpt, we are going to be a little limited just because of how it looks. But nevertheless, up about that far, down about that far. And we can actually shift it back and forth to get a little bit more range of movement rock from side to side. Now, the neck sits into the body uh, kind of on a ball joint. I'm not quite sure because I'm able to force it and get some rocking movement, but I can't really get that much movement forward and back uh, at this joint here. So you saw how I'm able to get the range of movement out of it. It is what it is. Um, it works just fine. We can get Gorgo to look in some solid directions here. We do have swivels and hinges at the shoulders, so we can spin all the way around and Gorgo can T-pose. No problem, right? So for the elbows, we do have single hinges. Cool. And then they plug into the biceps on a swivel. So that's cool. All right. For the wrists, initially out of the box, I was a little confused as to what was going on here. Uh, but basically, it's going to be your standard uh, swivel hinge combo. As you can see, we do have hinge movement that way, and then it swivels. But if you do want to hinge like that, you are going to have to swivel that around where the hinge plugs into the forearm. For the uh, ab crunch, um, it does seem to be just a swivel, right? So moving it forward and back and rocking it from side to side, uh, maybe it is a ball joint. I have not popped this figure apart, but I really don't have much movement uh, if it is a ball joint aside from wiggling. But I mean, with the neck movement and the rest of the joints, that's pretty fine. For the hips, they do appear to be ball joints. So Gorgo can kick out about that far and back and then to the side, just like so. Uh, the hips have gotten a little looser over time, but it's nothing significant to the point where it's like Gorgo is going to be doing a one-legged kick and then whoop, fall over. Uh, more so the right leg than the other one. But, I mean, it's fine. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, we do have single hinge knees. These are actually relatively stable. Um, they are not ratchet joints, but they do feel uh, very stable, almost as if they were. I hope that makes sense. Uh, for the ankles, this was something that I, I had a hard time conceptualizing because they almost look like the same joints as in the wrist, but they are not, um, at least I think. So we do have, as you can see here, the pin uh, for a hinge that allows you to move forward and back. And then uh, there's no ankle rocker, it seems, but we can spin the foot around. Okay, we do have toe hinge. And both of mine are relatively loose. They do like to move. Uh, this one does like to pop off, but if it is going to be the same for yours, as you can see, just uh, floop, right back on, no issues. The tail, uh, it is multi-segmented. Uh, the tip of mine does like to pop off, but you can see what kind of ball joint section they have there. Uh, it's a bit of a bummer, but it pops back on with relative ease. No problem there. But uh, it is pre-posed, so Gorgo is kind of just naturally wanting to have that upper curl to the tail. So we can twist it and turn it and move it forward and back and all the ways around. I know that section is upside down, but nevertheless, uh, it is getting a little bit loose. So I am wondering how that will hold up in the long run, but nevertheless, it's there. So what I will say is for a first attempt at a kaiju action figure, I think Titanic Creations did a rather solid job getting Gorgo out there and providing just enough articulation to make kaiju action figure fans happy. So I have to say it is a solid thumbs up. With that, be with that being said, though, uh, obviously, as noted, there are a few areas where improvement can definitely be made, and I do hope as they move forward, they will be able to address that. Time to talk about accessories, and what do we get? Well, we do have, obviously, the figure in an alternate head sculpt like I talked about. We do have the baby Gorgo figure, or Gorgo proper if you're going to look at this one as Agra. And we do have the Bell Sub. We have the Jet Squadron, and then we have some gold building. All right, all right. Let's take a look at the building. I keep saying it like I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's, it's the Eiffel Tower. I know what it is. 
overall, I would have to say that Big Ben does look pretty solid. We do have what I'm going to believe are scratch marks on some of the clock faces, which is really neat because there is a neat gimmick where it can be destroyed and we can pop it apart, which is neat. I will say that we do have a little bit of a pillar on the inside that does remain when you do remove it. And I suppose there's really no other way they could have done this uh, for the destruction feature, but that can look a little bit off considering we do have a more so organic look when Big Ben is well put together. I don't know if that makes sense, but nevertheless, overall, this is a nice accessory and I'm glad that a building is included. This is going to be the best accessory for baby Gorgo. Uh, well, this is going to be a very close second. Why? Uh, look at the quality. I don't think I need to say much else. Yes, obviously. It's not as good as a six inch scale figure, but considering this is going to be a mini figure, it looks fantastic. And there is actual paint shading on something that is this small. Nice. The bell sub. It's there. It's an accessory. Gorgo can hold it. You can put it in a water display, whatever you would like to do. I'm not really sure what I would do with it myself, but it is there if you are looking to get it. Next, we do have that alternate head sculpt where there are going to be glow in the dark eyes that glow red. This one I feel is really, really well intended and ambitious. However, it falls flat. Here are going to be the shots of the head on its own and then glow in the dark. It is a rather weak effect that tends to last only about a minute tops when I really hit this with UV light by itself in sunlight with my studio lights. I can't really get this to last a long time, nor can I really get this to glow really bright. So I don't know what the trick is here. Maybe it's a me thing, but I appreciate the effort. Maybe we can do something a bit different here. All right. Now, very quickly, we'll go ahead and we'll talk about the fighter jet. So here's going to be a picture of what one of them looks like up close and personal and uh, all things considered pretty solidly detailed for a gray piece of plastic where uh, you can see where the where the fighter pilot would be the little cockpit or what have you so uh for this particular set we do actually get some pretty solid setup here we do get three of them and they are all going to be on bendy wires here right and we do get this little disc base and if you're familiar with the sh monster arts godzilla jr the original release uh we had something similar for his helicopters so the way that it works is you're going to put the jet on one of the bendy wires and then you're going to put the bendy wire into the base. The only issue is even if you do push it in rather securely, uh, we do have a little bit of a balancing issue and mine do like to come out rather easily. So as you get them in, um, you may have your jets on there. You can even just see it's spinning as it is and it does become a very difficult balancing act you can already see it's it, it's wobbling in this one yeah so um let me pop this off and let me try this so unfortunately i don't think um if i do really use the jets uh moving forward i would use this system um i think i may find some sort of makeshift stands uh for these jets but honestly, I don't think for me, I would be using them too much to begin with. Um, but they're cool pieces nevertheless. Okay, so I got, well, another one fell off. All right. So I think you get the point that I'm making here. And then it likes to fall over. So I will say um, A for effort for thinking this through. Um, I think there are a lot of companies that would do this. But I think in terms of actual execution with the base and getting that to work, um, Maybe this is something to rethink about moving forward with future releases. All right, and that will wrap up the accessories. And what I will say overall for the core package of Gorgo, which is what I'm going to say most people will like, will be the Big Ben. We will have the Baby Gorgo. We will have the Bell Sub, which I think is great. And for the alternate head sculpt, some folks find that to be a bit more accurate to the source material. For me, potato, potato. It is what it is. The fighter jets, quite frankly, uh, whatever, they're there. I'm not really a big fan of them, so it is what it is. I think overall it's a pretty solid package considering the original price that this was solicited at at $100. And 
I don't know, maybe they could learn moving forward. But if you do need other accessories, like maybe you need some other buildings or explosions or support stands, you know that I have videos to help you out. Now let's go ahead and wrap up this review with a size comparison. So this way you can see just how big this whole set will be with some other figures you just might have. We're mostly gonna focus in on the Kaiju who are gonna be here and Gorgo blends in near seamlessly. So buy now, skip, or wait for a deal. Well, first and foremost, Gorgo is sold out. All of the units are gone to my understanding and you can't get it online anymore. It was only available direct through Titanic Creations. So if you are looking to get it, there is some speakings of on social media that there is going to be a comic version sometime next year. So follow Titanic Creations and uh, make sure you don't miss that. So back to the figure here. Uh, there are two trains of thought, I think that are primary here, right? So the first one, on an objective basis, when you factor in all other action figures, you look at SH Monster Arts, SH Figure Arts, NECA, Revel Tech, Super 7, so on and so forth, how does this figure stack up? Well, the paint applications are pretty solid and the sculpted details are great. This figure does look really solid. I think the teeth could be improved. When it comes to the articulation, as I demonstrated, there were a few areas which were loose on my Gorgo, and I am a little afraid over time if this figure will really hold up together pertaining to the joint tightness. For the accessories, the fighter jets, I will say as blatantly as I can, they're a dud. And the other accessories, they're good, but I don't know, maybe there's something else that could have been thrown in like other hand parts. I mean, yeah, Gorgo does have, you know, those curled hands, but I don't know, splayed hands, maybe claw swiping hands. That would be cool as well. In the grand scheme of things, when compared to everything else, Gorgo for a hundred bucks, um, that's a really tough sell and I can understand why some folks passed on it. So it's not going to be over the top amazing, but at the same time, it's something that you can purchase. Now, with that being said, this is going to be Titanic Creations' first toe in the water for a kaiju action figure. They apparently have plans for more, and they are also going to work on a Titanicus. And for their first attempt at a kaiju action figure, this is amazing. I really like this and I want them to continue. You have some companies who are handling other licenses who are charging just a little bit less and they, for whatever reason, don't understand. Asterisk. The source material quite as good as Titanic Creations handled Gorgo here. The designers, I think, for those uh, the other company I'm referencing uh, does, but when it comes to the business aspect, I don't think that they do. Nevertheless, the Titanic Creations Gorgo here is a fantastic tribute and love letter to Gorgo and Kaiju fans of the obscure nature where we're not going to get this stuff from other big name companies. And considering that this is a solid quality figure, all things taken into consideration, A for effort, B for execution, overall project, you're getting an A minus. I like this. I'll get the comic one. As long as you keep improving, I think they're a serious contender.